Do you know what serial number the spike is? <laughs> you mean like what is the serial yeah. number? Um, no. No. 19666 C. Sounds about right. <laughs> that sounds about right. Is that a bad omen or what? I don't know, man. I just don't. I don't know. How long have we had this? <sighs> man, I think we, we got this from Autopia probably about, I want to say almost two years ago. Has it really been two years? It really has. Unfortunately, that was our last, our last raffle bike was about two years ago. So what kind of bums me out is like walking back here and seeing it just like right there in the corner. I feel like we need to do something about it. I just can't get like motivation for it. Man, we are running short on time. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we're getting comfortable. <laughs> I don't know if we're getting lazy. I don't, I don't I, think we're getting lazy. I don't know if we're getting tired. I don't know what's going on. I think we're getting a little tired, but we have to make an effort to get this thing like at least buttoned up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's kind of a cool bike. No, you know? it's, it's very cool. It's got a cool bobber look. It's, you know, Royal Enfields are huge right now. Yeah. I mean, I dig all the, the stuff on it. It almost looks like a hardtail. I mean, it's yeah. there. It's ready, to, it's ready to be bobbed and like done. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little worried about the electrical issues that we were having because we were having some grounding issues that killed that battery. Right. You know, and I felt like when we first got this, we almost had it started and running and yeah. then it was just killing batteries. And for some reason, this thing just doesn't want to cooperate with us right now. So, I mean, what do you think? Do you, do you want to try and... We can start on the electrical again and just kind of rewire everything back, make sure all the wiring's done and it's not killing batteries. Yeah. Well, I think we have to do something. I think this should be the year that we actually get it done. We do the, the auction or what were we going to do? A raffle? raffle. We'll do the raffle on it. And um, I, think, I think if we start doing something, we'll start feeling better about it and start sure. moving forward. So if we could finish this at the end of the season, I mean, that's going to hit or, you know, that's going to end our moto meetups on a really strong event. So is that what we're shooting for? I would hope so. So that's October. <laughs> I know. I, and that's a lot of time. Do we need to like hire somebody to help us out maybe? Well, maybe, maybe not hire somebody, but maybe we can, <laughs> we can enlist some, yeah. somebody to come and help. Maybe we get Joe and I think Joe would be down to help us kind of yeah. like, you know, maybe one day a month we'll, we can just kind of start going through and wiring That's stuff. That's a good idea. You know, let's, let's ask yeah. him if he wants to help us out. Yeah. And then... Um, and anybody else. Anyone. Maybe we can get a few of our friends to come through and help us get some motivation to sure. kind of do the stuff that we burn out on. Yeah. Because I got to tell you, dude, with all the bikes we've put together over the last couple of years, I'm a little burnt out on tracing wires and looking at wiring diagrams. I am too. You know, and I'm... I'm burnt out on something going right and then all of a sudden something going horribly yeah, wrong. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's do that. Let's make a plan uh, that last Moto Meetup Monster Mash Cars and Coffee in October, our goal is to have this ready to, to give away to somebody yeah, for a charity. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right. Um, start promoting it. We still need to talk to Ronnie too. Yeah. But he had the tank painted, the fender was ready to go. I mean, I don't know how he's feeling these days, but right. after the whole accident, you know? Yeah, so last year, Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. Wow, you know, it was a great ride. One of the biggest that we've had. As we left our second location, the rain just started to pour. It's coming down hard, just couldn't see the road. Um, so much rain hitting the visors. And Ronnie, you know, veered into the median, couldn't see the road, bike flipped really hurt himself bad you know he broke his collarbone broke some ribs and um you could tell he was in a lot of pain but you know he's just he's an old rocker he's a tough old goat you know i took him to the hospital and there was no way he was going to let anybody wheel him into the emergency room he was going to walk i felt better before but i'm happy to be it's up walking and talking yeah oh okay. well let's do that first let's Talk check in ronnie. with ronnie sure See how he's doing, see where he's at with everything, and, and we'll take it one lap at a time, my one friend. Lap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so Steve and I were supposed to work on the Royal Enfield tonight, but kind of had a change of plans. Um, I'm going to kind of swing this one on him. 
Steve Brown just hit me up. They're from the Antique Motorcycle Club of New Mexico. Pretty cool group of guys. They get together every so often, not too often. Um, they do a lot of like vintage motorcycle stuff. So we're talking pre-70s mostly. A lot of carburation, kickstart, things like that. No, I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and give them a call as I'm kind of driving and put it on speaker song. Hey, what's up? Not much, man. We were supposed to work on the uh, Royal Enfield today. I just got a call from Steve Brown, and he was reaching out. He wanted to see if we can get some bikes together to uh, ride up to Taos. You think you're up for that? Oh, dude, it's been it's been a crazy week. I still have one more uh, one more week before I wrap on the show, and I'm trying to get to the dirt bike. I want to work on the Bull Taco, so I'm trying to get to it. It's buried. It hasn't moved since we did Built Well. My garage is a freaking mess, basically. I know it's short timing, but you know you can kind of get out of that mess you call a garage. I'm looking at the BMW right now, dude. It is like buried. I haven't started it in probably a year, honestly. It's probably been a year. Yeah, but it's German, right? You, you always talk about how German engineering <laughs> will, will make that thing run. I'm sure it'll start. I just, I'm going to need a new battery. I got to get it out of the garage. Ugh. So you sure you want to do this this weekend? Yeah, man. It's going to be great. You trust me. You're going to love it. Dude, I'm never going to get this garage clean. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to have to leave pretty early, about 5, 5.30 in the morning. We'll jam up to Taos, meet up with the guys. We're supposed to be riding the Enchanted Loop, the Enchanted Circle, and then uh, grab lunch, say hi to my grandmother. We got our boys uh, Tyson and Steve from Rest is Gold here riding with us today. 11th hour, rolled up on us late. Uh, late first thing this morning and had a little mechanical trouble but hey had a great ride with with the rig boys and it's good to spend some time out on the road with some of these vintage bikes so always a always a good time and rig always supports the antique club and and so we support everything you guys do too ride was beautiful everybody was having a good time the bmw is actually running okay considering it hadn't started in about a year and then all of a sudden it just started it was pouring fuel sort of losing power. I felt like I just was running on one cylinder and it's kind of it's kind of a bummer because everything was going great. Well, luckily one of the stops is going to be Todd Rasmussen, who's a BMW guy and one of the Antique Motorcycle Club friends. So we pulled into his shop. So Steve, did you just uh, die and wake up in BMW heaven? Dude, I think I'm dreaming still. <laughs> Surrounded by vintage BMWs. Todd's helping me work on my BMW. It just so happens. I might You're not have woke up yet. You're in heaven. You're like paying money. Just so happens your BMW isn't running. You just happen to wind up in the right spot. <laughs> Maybe that's, my year's turning around. That's the luck. <laughs> See, this this morning you woke up in hell. Now you're in heaven. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I've been working on old BMWs for mm, 25, 30 years now. Um, my specialty is... Um, plunger bikes from late 30s to the early 50s uh, sometimes bikes earlier than that uh, I really like these old BMWs it was fun 25 years ago because they were cheap and nobody uh, nobody seemed to notice <laughs> so you get a really nice bike and uh, and they're um, they're really rideable even the pre-war stuff the suspension's good the brakes are good They've got enough power, and they're dead-on reliable. And uh, they're beautiful bikes. You know, German engineering was way ahead of the rest of the world in those days. These kind of rides are good. I thought we could take a break from the build and the shop, um, especially Steve's kind of good for him to get away and actually get on the bike and just kind of clear his head. Well, all in all, it ended up being a pretty great time with the Antique Motorcycle Club, and... I'm really glad that Steve Brown called and asked us to ride with them because it turned out to be just what we all needed. I know Tyson likes to say that I need a break after film stuff, but believe me, he needs it just as much as I do. And I can tell his mood totally changes when we get out to the mountains. Then we can get back to the business of running the business and uh, you know, that can get crazy as well because we totally have to get back and get ready for cars and coffee in a week.
so I've known Rick for a long time, um, probably since I moved to Albuquerque. And uh, when I opened up my first shop, I asked him to do this mural. And it was really cool. It was kind of like psychedelic. He took it a little bit too far as he usually does because, you know, he's like the artist type. Wanted to do like these two guys just riding uh, choppers kind of like through the New Mexico sunset. And he did this elaborate thing with like freaking crystals, and, like stars and stuff and like star patterns. And it was, it was really cool, but it was just really elaborate. And uh once we moved from that location, they covered it up and he was a little bummed about it. And I was pretty bummed about it too, because we did spend about four days solid working on that mural. Mike. Hey, what's hey up? Mike. Yeah. Got a second? No, not really. What, I yeah. just want to show you something. So you know how we're doing the mural over there? Yo, you're finally doing it? Yeah, we got we got Rick over here. Oh, cool. So I've been spent a lot of time working on this. I'm gonna, I want to show Daniel too, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. let me show you what I got planned. <laughs> so. So Steve has been overthinking this mural for a while, you know, works in Hollywood, likes to be really hands-on. I'm not sure what he has in mind. It's probably going to be something pretty elaborate and big because that's how they do it over there in Hollywood. Um, I keep hearing something about Breaking Bad or something. He, I don't know. Hey, dude. What's up, man? You already got started? Yeah. So this is kind of what I had in mind, all right? So. So we get like all the way from the very end, like all the way there, all the way to here and all the way up. And I got these drawings. It's like, you know, Tamalewood, you know, like Tamalewood, yeah. like Hollywood sign up there in the Hollywood Hills. Uh huh. So I'm going to have Tamalewood across here and like Tyson and I will be standing right there and like looking down, you know, it's got this breaking bad vibe. Like I'll probably make us look like Walt and Jesse. So you want to do all this? So what what did he tell you? He wanted tamalewood on the whole wall. The whole wall? Yeah, with your portrait. Okay, I don't know about portraits, dude. I don't know if like Albuquerque Mount Rushmore is really the vibe. Yeah. That, um, that's so something. we kind of like talked a little bit more about this earlier, right? Yeah. And this is gonna be like a surprise. I think this would be good. Well, like he designed this anyway, so I'm sure he's gonna be fine with this. Okay. This is a lot easier. It fits New Mexico. I mean, this is kind of like your style too, right? Yeah, this is what I was planning on doing, so. Okay, so yeah, we just won't say anything. We'll do a big unveiling, it'll be a surprise. We'll just tell them we're still going with it. It's still the Tamalewood thing. And we'll cover it up, nobody will know. And then we'll do an unveiling and I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs>